Come learn if scoliosis worsens in menopause. Normally here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we see two types of patients. We normally see kids, you know, that are 18 years of age or less that are progressing because of during growth factors. And we also see patients in the older stage, like 50 years and older because they're progressing in later stage life. Now, when it comes to scoliosis, the most prevalent type of scoliosis is adolescent scoliosis. So this counts for 80% of all these patients that I'm talking about. And idiopathic scoliosis means that there's no associated single cause of the scoliosis. And we believe scoliosis to be a multifactorial problem, meaning it's that there's a combination of factors that happen as a result of causing the curve to occur. This multi-factor component can affect many, it can affect people in different ages, but the most common age is we believe it happens sometime in juvenile years. Something happens that causes this curve to occur and then they start progressing as a result of growth. Now, unfortunately, idiopathic scoliosis can also occur, happen in the adult form, even though it's not nearly as common. There are some other types of scoliosis that make up the other 20% of scoliosis cases. And these remaining cases are also, are also associated with a causation. Now, unfortunately, that most of these cases are also treated like idiopathic scoliosis in the majority of people that are diagnosed with scoliosis, but there are a few or not. So the first type is something called neuromuscular scoliosis. And this is when a patient has a neuromuscular condition. A neuromuscular condition normally affects either the connective tissue of the body or the nerve system of the body. And when it affects the connective tissue of the body, it can cause either tissues of the body, like muscles and ligaments, to become too stiff and rigid, something like cerebral palsy, or they can become something like too laxed and too flexible, something like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And these, both of these conditions can lead to the development of scoliosis. And this is the, the muscular, the neuromuscular component of what I'm talking about. There's also conditions of the body that can affect the nerve system itself, meaning the spinal cord and nerves. And this is something like neurofibromatosis that can create fibroids within the nerve, something like a syrinx, which is a cyst within the spinal cord. These types of things can affect the nerve system, can also be related to the causation and development of scoliosis. Another type is something called congenital scoliosis, and this is when the spine actually in utero develops an abnormal vertebra called a hemivertebra. And this hemivertebra, instead of being a rectangle like every other vertebra or a square, develops into a triangle. And this hemivertebra or a half bone will cause a sharp curvature to develop. This is truly genetic scoliosis and you're born this way. So you don't truly develop this scoliosis in life. You develop it in utero and you're born with this type of congenital scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is normally a result that happens that we find in later stage life, and it's a result of the spine experiencing some type of shifting. This small shifting remains uncorrected and progresses and causes degeneration to occur in that area, and this degenerative area develops into an asymmetrical degeneration or wearing of the spine that leads to scoliosis in later stage life, typically in women, typically post 50 years of age and greater, and normally in the lumbar spine. And lastly is traumatic scoliosis, and this is when your spine experiences a trauma either in an adolescent or as an adult, and this trauma will cause a curvature to occur in that area. Now, who is the most common person affected by idiop idiopathic scoliosis? Idiopathic scoliosis unfortunately af definitely affects adolescent cases between 10 and 18 years of age, but it's more common in females. We see way more females, way more girls with scoliosis than we see boys. In fact, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons estimates that there's 10 times, uh, that I'm sorry, girls are 10 times more likely to develop adolescent idiopathic scoliosis than boys. And I see that in, in my clinic, that we see way more females, way more girls with scoliosis than we do see boys. In fact, girls are 10 times more likely to experience progression as a, at, uh, than boys. And we believe this happens because girls go through growth spurts earlier than boys, and they also go through a faster growth spurt, meaning their growth spurt is normally over two years. It's typically, you know, like 11 to 13, 12 to 14, where boys go over a growth spurt normally over four or five years. They normally grow longer and slower. And since we know progression normally happens during rapid growth, girls go through a faster or a more rapid growth 
than boys do. And this is, again, just theory. We really don't know, but this is what we think is why girls are more likely to develop it. Also, girls go through growth spurts at a younger age, meaning their postural centers have fully haven't developed in their brain, um, and they're younger and they're like longer and lengthier, so they haven't developed all these coordinating, coordinating reflexes. Like when boys go through growth, growth, uh, growth spurts that are older, these postural centers have already developed. So that's why we think it tends to affect girls more than boys. Scoliosis also affect women as they age more than it tends to affect men. So degenerative scoliosis or osteo or, or scoliosis called de novo scoliosis is more likely to develop women than it is adults. And we also believe this has to do with what happens during menopausal changes. So what happens when the spine starts to change as a result of natural aging, this, this, this degenerative scoliosis is a result of the spine deteriorating asymmetric or abnormally as a result of symmetry within the body. Degenerative scoliosis, also known as de novo scoliosis, which means scoliosis with no prior history of the condition. Now we know idiopathic scoliosis in the adolescent will lead to idiopathic scoliosis in the adult, meaning adolescent cases eventually become adult cases, so therefore we have adolescent scoliosis in the adult form. That's not what I'm talking about. De novo scoliosis or true degenerative scoliosis is patients who had no history of scoliosis, they did not have scoliosis before, and actually develop it in the adult form as a result of a degenerating spine, and most likely, and normally it was something traumatic that happened to them when they were younger in life that left uncorrected. This degeneration leads to this curve progressing slowly, but at menopause, when we have this related aging process that occurs at menopause, for some unknown reason, we, we see curves progress in both categories, in degenerative and also in adolescent idiopathic in the adult form. Why does this happen? Well, we really don't understand all the reasons why, but we believe it's, it has, it's a result of this ending of the menstruation cycle that starts to occur, and the body tends to go through a little bit of a rapid phase of aging as a result of the hormonal systems that tend to change, the hormones within the body tend to change, and this stage of progression can lead to more rapid progression at this stage. So again, it's during this phase of menopause is where we see this accelerated aging that can increase the progression of scoliosis. We also know that during this phase of life that uh, menopause can affect bone, osteoblastic activity can affect bone development. So bones can become more weaker and more vulnerable and the hormonal changes can cause the scoliosis to work. And as bones worsen, I'm sorry, and as these bones become less dense, it can make the spine, it can, it can make the, the vertebra of the spine become more vulnerable to compression fractures and also degenerative changes as a result of compression. That's why we see most of the time this tends to happen in the lumbar spine is because the lumbar spine is bearing the weight of the entire torso and it can make these areas of the spine degenerate and deteriorate faster. So closing thoughts here is that we know females are definitely more affected by scoliosis than, than the men or males, and we also know that scoliosis tends to progress at two main phases of life, in adolescent girls, somewhere between 10 and 14 years of age, and also postmenopausal women, somewhere around 55 years of age. The progression can occur in, in young adults or adolescents as a result of growth, and it happens men because of menopause in, in women in, in later stage life. The progression in men, later stage life in menopause, we believe it's the result of the hormonal changes and bone density problems that, that occur and making the spine more vulnerable to degeneration and compression fractures. So most of, mo the most important recommendation is in either stage you are, whether an adolescent progressing or in later stage life progressing as a result of menopause, being proactive to scoliosis, treating it earlier as opposed to later as the curve gets bigger, will always produce a more successful outcome, will always produce a greater, a greater result because the bigger your curve beca becomes and the older you, you become, the more difficult the reduction is in all facets, whether we're treating it conservatively or we're treating it surgically or traditionally, Smaller curves are always easier to treat than larger curves. So our recommendation is being proactive as soon as possible to manage your scoliosis and prevent it from worsening. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.